What's up guys? So today is going to be a slightly different kind of video. I'm going to be showing you guys a platform that you can use anytime for free. The platform is called Pramp.com and Pramp is a peer-to-peer -peer interviewing platform that allow you to interview friends in anything from coding to systems design to behavioral questions. Anything you want, Pramp probably has it. Pramp's been extremely influential to me in passing my reverb interviews and passing other coding assessments and online assessments and phone screens for top bank companies, so I strongly recommend you guys use it. It's a great tool to practice. Additionally, I want to extend a huge shout out to Yushuan, who you'll see interviewing me, and then me interviewing him in this video. Yushuan was so great and let me record our Pramp session. Uh, so thank you so much, Yushuan. I really appreciate it, and I hope you guys enjoy this video. Okay, cool. I'm gonna really quickly show you guys how to schedule an interview with Pramp. You just go to pramp.com and then you can use someone's referral link or you can just sign up with your email. I'm gonna put my referral link below, but it really doesn't do that much. You get a lot of interview credits anyways. Then you click start a practice interview. I'm doing data structures and algorithms, and then I can pick any time from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. So I'll just pick 9 a.m. Then after I schedule the interview, the question I'm gonna be asking is gonna show up below, and then five minutes before the interview, this cancel and reschedule button will turn into join an interview. I'll click that, and then I'll be matched with someone and I'll be given a question. Hey guys, I just clicked join session, so now we'll wait. Hey, how's it going? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Um, I run a YouTube channel, and I want to post a video about Pramp to show how awesome Pramp is. Would you be okay if I recorded this interview? Completely fine if not. <coughs> uh, yeah, I'm okay with that. Actually. Okay, cool. Thanks so much, yeah. man. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Uh, looks like you're going first, so the question's island count. Do you want me to read it to you, or would you want to read it yourself? Uh, yeah, I, I would prefer if you read it to me, because I actually uh, hide the left panel, because I prefer to... In a real interview, I won't have, get, have that available to me. Yeah, fair, fair. Okay, so uh, it's island count. Given a 2D array binary matrix of zeros and ones, implement a function get number of islands that returns the number of islands of ones in the binary matrix. An island is defined as a group of adjacent values that are all ones. A cell in binary matrix is considered adjacent to another cell if they are next to each, either on the same row or column. Note that two values are one. Two values of one are not part of the same island if they're sharing only a mutual corner, if they're diagonal neighbors. <coughs> I see. Okay, so same row or same column, um, and you want to count the number of Um, awesome. So in this case, let me see, we have one island here, Okay. another island here, um, another island here, another island here, and one last island here. So this would be five? Uh, one, six. Where's yeah, the, where it would be missing? six. Yeah. Where am I missing my last island? One, two, three, four, oh, five, six, five, six. Yeah, okay, yeah. So those two are not connected. Okay. <clears throat> so I guess we could do a DFS kind of deal. You know, we could um, iterate through the 2D uh, this matrix, and whenever we see a one, we could do a DFS and mark all of those, uh, <clears throat> all of the ones we encounter along the way as visited. And then we can proceed um, by doing this because now the, ne the next time we see a one, if it's part of the same uh, island, then it would have already been visited, so we won't double count. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's a pretty vi viable strategy. Uh, this way, we're only counting each, like we're, we're only visiting each cell in this matrix at most once, uh, which means that this is going to be an O of n squared algorithm. Mm -hmm. And the space is going to be, if we're holding you no know, I um, a visited matrix that's of the same dimensions of the matrix that we're given, it's going to be an O n squared 
space complexity solution as well. Does that sound about right? Yeah, that sounds good to me. So are you, you're saying the O of n squared would come from the calls to the call stack in the DFS? Uh, the O of n squared in Are you you're saying space. O of n squared space? Yes. And where, where would that space come from? Uh, so I think there's, you know, there's two options here. So um, we can either maintain a visit matrix that says, you know, at row column, yeah. is, it, is it or is it not? Or we could actually modify the binary matrix as we go along and, you know, we turn it from one to, for example, two, if we choose that two represents the state where it's, it was an island, but now it's a visited island that we don't want to count another time. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna you know in, in order to maintain the data that we were given and not modify it, I'm gonna maintain a visited visited matrix. Oh okay. Oh okay, that makes yeah. sense. Cool. Yeah, I prefer you know not, not to do recursive. You know if the other option is fairly available to us, but you know we can do recursive actually. It's it's either either one works. Either's fine. Uh, Sounds good to me. Cool. Uh, so so row column visited. Uh, so what do, we, what do we want to do here? So in DFS, we you know get, we create an empty stack, and um, we want to iterate through the when, when we pop something off a stack, we want to push the neighboring cells onto the stack. So let me you know uh, go ahead and do that. So let's say we you know start at uh, RC. Uh, and while stack <coughs> rc is equal to stack dot pop, um, and then for uh, I'm gonna say rd and cd is equal to the you know the delta the kind of a plus one minus one movements of um, that we're gonna use to kind of explore the neighboring you know, the neighboring cells. Okay. And and you know our options are negative one zero. Um, one, zero, zero, negative one, or zero, one. So then we know that, you know, if we have a chance, we have, if we have something like, you know, R of D, R plus R D is too small, or R plus R D is too big. Um, actually, let's see. Say that we define this inside, so that we have access to this. The dimensions of the matrix and n is equal to length of binary matrix. Length of binary matrix zero. Um, if it's too small, or it's too big, or the other one is too small or too big, then we want to skip this. Uh, otherwise, we want to uh, push onto the stack, but but there's a chance that it's been visited already. So, uh, if visited R plus R D, C plus C D, continue. Um, and then we want to pop on. We want to push on R plus R D, C plus C D. Cool. So, you know, this is a DFS, but what do we want to do within each DFS? Uh, we want to say that <coughs> uh, visited RC is equal to true. So we want to go through and, uh, you know, mark each time that we, we, we hit a one, we want to make sure that it's true. Oh, actually there is one clause that I forgot to check. We need to check that uh, if binary matrix of this is zero, then we also want to continue because we don't want to you know, explore a zero. So let's see. So what this loop from line nine to line 16 will do is it'll explore the top, bottom, left, and right adjacent cell to the one we're looking at first. And it'll, um, if the cell is not you know, out of bounds, if it's not a zero, and if we haven't already hit it, then we want to keep exploring from that adjacent cell. Um, cool. So, you know, I think this so far probably looks good. Um, and then 
Now from the main method, we want to uh, explore the matrix using this DFS method. So we want to maintain a num islands counter uh, from zero. And then uh, we want to iterate throughout the array. And we want to um, say if if not, so if we haven't explored uh, this cell, and if this cell is a one, then we want to increment our number of islands, and we want to go through and uh, and we want to DFS it. So if not visited ij, um, if binary matrix ij is equal to one and has not been visited, um, num islands, we increment it by one and we want to DFS ij. And I'm going to uh, maintain this visited here outside. Okay. Uh, move this to the top. And I'm going to say visited is going to be the same dimensions as the binary matrix that we're given. So it's going to be you know, all false at the beginning. Uh, so it's going to be false times n for um, m rows. So this is going to be an m by n uh, matrix of Boolean values. OK, cool. Cool. You know, I think this is a pretty good start. Oh, we all have to return. We have to return the number of islands okay. at the end. Um. Cool. Yeah. Do you want to give this a shot? Uh, let's. Uh, yeah. Sure. You know, we have a we have a test matrix here, so we can use it. Print get number of islands binary matrix, and we're expecting six. Mm -hmm. Sweet. That awesome. Looks good to me. Cool. Uh, one thing is, uh, you know, let's change this to a one. So this will connect three previously uh, separate islands. Um, so this will be now turn them into one island. So that'll be uh, now we're expecting four. Okay. Sweet. Okay. No, I'm I'm pretty you know, happy with this so far. Then so then let's uh let's comment this out and and see if this passes the tests. Oh, weird. Nice. Good stuff. Cool. Cool. Awesome. You want to uh, Yeah, I guess. Yeah, sure. Let's swap it around and uh, see what question you get. Cool. Okay, so pancake sort. Um, if you could give me a quick sec to read this. Sure. Write <clears throat> a function. Okay, so I have to write two functions, a function flip that reverses the order of the first k elements in the array, and then write a function pancake sort that sorts uh, the array using my flip function. And then I'm going to be yeah. given one argument. My argument is array, and this is a list of integers. And then I want to re just return, do I even need to return? Uh, you are. It says at the bottom that my output the 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 array. So I just want to return my array, um, and yes. I, it's going to be. I want to be altering it in place probably. So I'm mm -hmm. just going to be returning that array. Um, okay. So let's get to writing. So at the end, I'm going to return array. But let's write my flip function first, mm -hmm. because that's number one. So def flip r k. So the description here is reverse uh, the first k elements in R. Uh, I get two arguments. It's going to be my array, a list of integers, and uh, arg2, arg1, rather. And k is just an integer, which is represents the first so many elements in my array that I want to flip. And then I just want to return my array. So uh, to implement this, uh, the way that I'd want to do this is uh, because I don't 
really, I don't really want to do, I don't want to create anything new. So I'm just going to do pairwise swaps in my array. So uh, I guess the way that like flipping would work, like an example flip would be like, if I had like one, two, three, four, and my K equals the first three elements, then I'd want to return three, two, one, four. Does that, is that reasonable? Yes, that is correct. Okay, great. So then I guess what I should be doing here is I, I want to use some type of while loop and I want to say, uh, and uh, yeah, I want to say while uh, K is less, uh, is uh, greater than zero, I want to flip the elements at K minus one and then I want to like be building up in some way. So I'm going to need one other value. I'll have a start and a K and the K can be my end. So I'll have a start which is zero and then while K is greater than and it actually doesn't need to be greater than zero. It just needs to be greater than S. So then what I can do is I can just flip the value at K minus one and the value at S. So I can say mm -hmm. array at K minus one, array at S equals array at K minus one. Oh, no, it'd be array at S, array at K minus one. And then I want to, sorry, I forgot decrementing K because I need to decrease like my search space K and then I need to increment S. And then at the end, I want to return my array. So let's walk through an example uh, before I like run anything to make sure this would work. So if I passed in and I'm gonna, would you be okay if I ran it on the flip function first? Just no, go see. ahead. Okay, cool. So if I'm passing in one, two, three, four, and three, my expected output is three, two, one, four, so just to talk through what this would look like, um, I'm gonna take some stuff from my console. So uh, this would pass in one, two, three, four. My K would be equal to three. So then I would say, well, K is greater than S. I would do these things. Um, so the array at two and the array at zero would swap. And then I decrement K one, increment S one. So then after my first iteration, uh, I'm going to have three and actually, um, so I'm going to have three, two, one, four, but the thing that I'm concerned about here is I'm saying, well, K is greater than S. I think because I'm like always looking at my K minus one, I want to have, well, K minus one is greater than S. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I think that will work. I'm going to try, let's run this and see if it works correctly. Great, so that worked how I wanted it to. Let's run one more on like a logger input just to make sure there's no other bugs. For, I'm just gonna uh, flip the entire thing. So this would give me four, three, two, one. Four, three, two, one. Um, and let's see if this works correctly. Great, it does. So uh, now I'm gonna implement pancake sort. If you're okay, would you be okay with me starting to yeah. implement that? Great. Yeah, that is fine. Just to talk about the time and space, for the flip function, the flip function's in space because I'm just doing pairwise swaps. And then the time complexity is going to be K where K is like the input because I'm going to need to like pass over K elements in that array. Does that make sense? Great. Mm -hmm. So now for pancake sort, I can only flip. Um, so, so I need to sort this array, but I need to sort it only using my flip. So let's think about like ways that I could do that. So I guess, um, in the example given, oh, so I want to sort this, oh, wow, by only using my flip function. So I guess then what I can do is, uh, I guess anytime I find the smallest number, I could flip it to the end. I could flip the entire thing and then, so, so, okay, so I start out with like, looking at all four elements, all five elements. So I'll say like nums that I need to look at is five. So I uh, run through this array one time and I find like that one's my smallest element. So I'm gonna flip it to the end and I'm gonna decrease my search space one. So like after the first iteration I could have, uh, I'd flip this so it'd be two, three, four, five, one. So then I'd decrease to four and then now I'd look through my first four elements. I'd see that my smallest number is two, so I'd flip all of them. And then I'd have, so I'd decrease this to three and then have, uh, I think this would be five 
four, three, two, one. And then I would do this for the next, and then I'd do this for the next three times. Would that, does that make sense? Uh, can you explain the, what, the, what is the nums pointer hold again? Sorry, yeah. So, okay. So nums is, uh, it would just be n, which would be like the length of elements that I still need to look at. Uh, n number of elements that need to be considered. So then my steps would be one, find the smallest element in num elements to be considered, and then two, flip that element to the end, uh, decrement nums to be considered. And then after, uh, when nums to be considered is zero, flip entire thing one more time and return it. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, would, yeah. yeah. Would that be an okay approach to implement? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay, great. So um, I'm starting out with, I'm gonna call my nums to be considered n. So n is going to be equal to my length of my array. And then I'm gonna say, this is gonna be a while loop. While n is not equal to zero, <clears throat> I need to find the smallest element. Uh, and I think uh, of the first n, so I need to look through the first n elements. So I could even use a helper function, um, uh, like find uh, in index. Oh, but actually one thing I was talking about, I was talking about flipping that to the end, but basically to flip that to the end, I need to do two flips. So um, in order to flip like, for example, on line 41, if I had, let's say that I had two, three, one, four, I need to do a flip to the beginning to get one to the beginning and then flip to the end. So I need to do a flip of the first three elements and then I need to do a flip of the entire, uh, of the entire uh, amount of elements that I still need to consider. Does that make sense? Yeah, so your strategy is to uh, bring the bring this smallest element to the beginning and then Flip bring it, it to the, to end. the end yeah and then, and then my search at the end at the end of everything you want to flip everything again mm -hmm. okay so um so okay yeah so what i need to be doing is uh index of smallest and then could you I also just, yeah sorry uh could you also you know you do the same thing except you flip the back of the biggest one to the end instead so it saves you one flip overall, but it doesn't, you know, I think both case, both uh, yeah. solutions are pretty much doing the same thing, right? Where you're taking flip. the smallest or the end, or the smallest or the largest, and you're taking it, uh, building the array bit by bit like that. Yeah, no, I, yeah, like I, I, I feel, feel, feel free, feel free to, you know, go to go with your solution if you like, uh, no, it's up to you. I'm completely uh, comfortable with using uh, the largest. So yeah, okay, so what I'll just be changing here is find the largest element. I'll flip it to the beginning and then flip it to the end and then decrement my search space and then return to the end rather than doing one more flip. And I think that'd be cleaner because there's nothing outside the while loop. Um, so cool, thank you for that input. I uh, appreciate that. So I'm gonna start implementing this. So I'm gonna find the index of largest uh, and I'll use like a helper function here, def uh, index of largest and I'll pass in just my array. Um, and I'll say for I, oh, it, it's, is it num idx in enumerate array? Is that the syntax? Uh, uh, it would be idx num. Oh, idx num, okay, thanks. So for idx num, uh, <coughs> m is equal to array at zero. If len r is greater than zero else i'm just going to call it zero um if num is greater than if num is greater than m then max index equals i'm just going to stretch that to zero uh if num is greater than m then max index equals current index and then at the end, just return max index. So let's just look through that really quickly. I'm saying uh, my maximum number, so I'm just gonna call this m num so we know m is like the maximum number. 
So if our okay. current num is greater than our m num, then we want to change our max index to our current index. And then at the end, we return our max index. Cool. So that will give us index of largest. Okay. Um, and then we're just passing an array. So now we want to do two uh, flips. So I want to do flip of array for index of largest flip of array uh, for our entire n still being considered. So now, so this flips, flips largest to the beginning and then flips largest, fl well, it flips entire array. So current largest is at end. And then I want to decrement n minus equals one. So this looks pretty solid to me, but the one issue is right now I'm like looking through my entire array to find my index of largest, but I just want to look at the slice of uh, zero to my current n. Uh, let's see that I wouldn't get like, so the problem here is like n is going to be like five, but that would give us an out of bounds if we have like a five length array, because that would actually be four. So I want to do n minus one. Um, and then this would decrease in space. So this so looks like... The, the, sorry, uh, this is just a syntactic thing. Your understanding is correct. So I wanted to point it out that if you have a zero colon five, it'll take a look at the first five elements uh, because the ending index is non-inclusive. Oh, okay. So I should just, I should just leave that. Great. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so I think that this makes uh, sense and would work. Uh, I'm just going to walk through an example really quick before I run anything, if that's okay. Go for it. Okay, sweet. So, and then I'm gonna pass an R. So the goal here is one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so if I call this on one, five, four, three, two, this would uh, set n equal to five. Well, n was not equal to zero, it would find the index of largest. So it would look through here. It would uh, first set it equal to one. Well, first set it equal to zero, and then it would walk one over and then see the next element is five, and then it would change it to one. So our index of largest is going to be one. It's gonna compare all the other numbers. They're gonna be less, so that's gonna return one. So our first return, our first index of largest is going to be one. So now we want to flip the array comma index of largest. So we're going to flip uh, with k equal to one. So well, k minus one is greater than s. So, but k minus one is actually just zero. So this should be, well, k minus one is greater than or equal to s. Uh, I want to, but then I think what I want to be doing is not flipping in k minus one. I want to be flipping. I want to pass in the index, and I want to flip. I want to flip k. So now uh, I'm I'm passing in the index rather than passing in like the k elements. Oh, so sorry. I, I, I think I think that you know <clears throat> while I understand what you're trying to do. Uh, I'm sorry. Speaking I think from like, yeah, yeah. Because I'm passing in the index, I actually want to flip like the first k elements. So I need to pass in index of largest plus one because this flips the first k plus one elements because the index is like the number of elements minus one. Does that make sense? Yes, this makes sense. Okay. I think it's good that you're not modifying the flip method. Because, because then that you know, wouldn't do the flip. n elements. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And technically, this was part of the assignment where you, they want you to implement flip a certain way. Yeah. yeah. And then you don't want to modify that, right? Yeah. Fair. So then. This would flip it to the beginning. Um, so hopefully we should be getting five, one, four, three, two. And then this should flip mm -hmm. it to the end. So right now our n is equal to five. Um, and that should that should do the job. So that should give us so five, one, four, three, two. Um, and then after we get five, one, four, three, two, and then it should flip it again, and we should get two, three, four one, five, and then that should keep going. So now it decreases our share space to four, does the same thing. Let's see if it finds it correctly in the first, The uh, so the n largest in the first four elements. 
because 0 to 4, oh, it's not inclusive, so again, that's fine. And it should give us the 4 is our largest one at index 2. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So I think this is going to work. I'm going to run it and see if there's any problems. Okay, so index of largest reference before assignment. Index, it looks like maybe I spelled it wrong. Index of largest. I, I, I shouldn't have named this. I'll just call it like IDX largest. Um, and then index of largest. Did I name this correctly? Let's just see. Yeah, so let's see if that works. Oh man. So. This gives me 15432, which is incorrect. So, um. Sorry, one moment. I'm going to silence my phone. All good, no worries. Going off. So, let's see. Print array. Print array. Okay, okay so this gives us 15432, and then 2. So this gives us one five four three two and then two three four five one in a really odd order. It should happen in, in the opposite order. Um, it should go one five four three two because we flip the largest, and then it should go. Um, oh, so this is just flipping the entire thing right now. Is that what? No, that's not what's happening. What's? Sorry. So okay, what's the first? So so given that you have one five four three two. Mm -hmm. At line 70, 71, what's the first output you expect? You expect it to be... Uh, 5, 1, 4, five, three, one two. 4, 3, 2, right? Which is not... So do, do, do you, do you want to call, uh, you know, flip on whatever you think the biggest index, the biggest, the max index should be, and then seeing if that at least gives you 5, 1, 4, 3, 2? Yeah, well, I mean, right now I'm calling it a plus 1. No, I think plus 1, no, it makes oh, okay. sense, actually. So, uh, but let's let's call flip array comma two, and then seeing if oh, that okay. gives you okay. seeing that see if that gives you what you want, or like just you can do it outside, but yeah. And then I'll just return after this first one. So that okay, gives me so that, you know, that does two. give you yeah, that does give you what you want. Uh, so it looks like your index your IDX largest is probably not functioning as you expect, right? I. Um, okay, yeah, definitely. So let's do <coughs> IDX largest returns, print IDX, IDX largest return. Ah, so that's giving me four, unfortunately. So we needed to give me five. So I guess if you look at IDX. Oh, I found the, I found the bug. Okay, so. It should give it's me like in your yeah, it's in your index of largest. Yeah. Okay. So return max index. Um so first I'm setting for num if num is greater than m num max index equals current index. So mnum should equal the array at that value. Oh, I never reset mnum. So that's that's the yeah. problem. So I need to say uh, num equals, oh, sorry, <coughs> so mnum equals num. Mm -hmm. Great, so let's see. Now that gives me one. So that's that's looks like it's correct. So okay. now let's say index largest at plus one. Cool. So awesome. it looks like that works. Thanks for helping me find that bug. No and problem. Then, um, let uh, is this fine to run the test? Yeah, go for it. Okay. No, I'm pretty happy with the rest of the code. Sweet. So it looks like that worked. All right, good job. The time would be so the flip function takes k time, uh, and then mm -hmm. because pancake sort, we're gonna need to like flip every single thing twice this will be like and this will be n squared time in the worst case because we're flipping yes yeah it'll be like some constant which is less than one times n squared um and then space would be i i think it's uh space is just o of one because we just have a lot of constants we're playing around with mm -hmm. cool
Cool. Um, well, thanks so much. I appreciate you letting me uh, record this. Yeah, no problem. What's your YouTube channel? Maybe, um, I, maybe I'll see myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll send you the link. I'll like, uh, I'll like connect with you and send you the link. Yeah, it's all right. That sounds name. awesome. Yeah. But yeah, no, no. I wish I, you know, wish I took a shower and you know, did yeah. my hair, you know, washed my face before this, but yeah. Oh well. <laughs> no, no, it no. is what it is. All right. All right. Have a good no. one. You have a good one. Bye. Yeah. Bye.